I'll leave you my receipts and make another swirl for you guys. Today's video is going to be a pretty fun. We're going to make a quiz game. So we're, we're going to make a game where where you can um, set up a bunch of questions, multiple choice, and somebody can take the quiz and then it'll tell them how well they did, how many they got right, how many they got wrong, etc, etc. Maybe we'll throw in percentage right there as well. So um, uh, like in my Prime's so tutorial, I decided to re-record the intro, so this was not recorded in December. And uh, I also decided to re-record the actual video because the actual video is 70 minutes long and I didn't want to put you guys through that. Hopefully I can record it um, explaining the code in a far less time. So I'll be just going through explaining the code rather than typing it all. Again, if you, um, please let me know which method you prefer, me typing out everything or me explaining out everything. Explaining everything in, in, in the code uh, without typing it out will make the tutorial go faster, but um, I'm hoping that I don't lose anything in terms of comprehension for you guys. So this tutorial will also be split in two sections, like my Prime's list tutorial, and those are number one, interface, number two, logic. For the interface section, we're going to set up how an individual multiple choice question looks like. So we're going to have a separate class for that because we're going to be using it over and over, over again. And we're going to organize all of the components using a box layout. And we're going to also learn about some new swing comp swing components like J radio button. And I think we learned about another one as well. But you, you can look forward to that in the tutorial. So for the logic section, we're going to use another layout. And that layout is going to be a card layout. A card layout is kind of a strange layout in that you can't see all the components of the layout at one time. Usually, the layout organizes where on the screen the components go. But in the card layout, usually only one component is visible at a time, and the card layout will organize when they're visible. So it's a little bit odd, but again, more on that in the tutorial. Um, I guess that's all I want to talk about. Uh, that's uh, moving right along. I'll see you in the tutorial. Alright, then, so here we are. So this is what our final result is going to look like. So we have our quiz set up here in three sections, or our question set up in three sections. It's part of section one, the question, which is going to be a J label, and then our multiple choice answers, which are going to be a bunch of radio buttons with different answers, and the third section is going to be our uh, control buttons, where we can move between the questions, or, or finish, I guess. So we're organizing this using a box layout, and a box layout it, it, when you add things to it, it'll either keep adding them vertically or it'll keep adding them horizontally. In this case, every time we add one, it'll, we add one, pops in on the top, then we add another one, it's this at this group, then we add a third one to so this group. And no matter how we align these, those groups will always be vertically aligned the same way. It'll always be on top of the question, next multiple choice, and then after the buttons. And so we organize each section into panels. So we have a panel for the question, panel for this, and a panel for this. And that's how we organize that. So we have three panels, each with different stuff in them. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing this tour. We're going to set up the interface of a single question. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So the class we have for that is radio question. So th this is what we're going to be making in this part of the tutorial. So we have our three sections that we explained, that I explained earlier. The questions, the answers, and the bottom section, which I couldn't think of a better name for, I guess. So, you know, we create a panel for each one, because that's how we're going to keep things organized. Um, and the questions, I didn't seem to add a J label, but I'm sure I'll get around to that later. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, actually. And in here, we have J radio button. The way J radio button it works is there are several of them, and every time you click one, well, there can only be one selected. All right. Another class that's very similar is J checkbox. And the way J checkbox works is exactly the same as radio button, where you can click and t turn them on and off. Only with J checkbox, you can have multiple checked, whereas with J radio button, you can only have one checked. So that's what we do here. We create an array of them because we're going to have multiple of them, multiple answers. And then after we create a button group, what a button group does is it basically keeps J radio buttons organized so that when you click one, it'll turn all the rest of them off, or it'll turn the other one that's on off. So once we initialize all these responses, we'll be, all these responses, we'll be adding them to this button group so they'll be organized in a, so they'll s stay aligned so that when we click on one, it'll turn the, the other ones off. Okay, so now for the bottom, fairly standard, we have a panel and we have two buttons set up. You, you, that should be fairly comfortable for you. Okay, so now we have the constructor. So this is, um, this is not our driver class. When I say driver class, I mean the class with the main method. So the program does not start with this class. So therefore, we're not going to be starting with main method. It doesn't have main method. 
it has a constructor. So every time this is created, uh, it'll be created from this constructor with parameters and all that. Which might feel a little different from you because we usually start with a uh, main method. So one thing to note is that this extends JPanel. So when this is initialized, you initialize it the same way as JPanel, except there's a couple of extra stuff that we added here. But other than that, it operates pretty much the same way as JPanel. Okay, so, um, you know, ready to question the name of the thing? We have four parameters. We have the string Q, which is going to be whatever our question is. We have an array of options, which are going to represent the, what we have ne next to each of the options. So if, if the question is, what's your favorite color? This array would be a string with a bunch of colors, red, green, blue, etc. And then an ants is which section of the this array is the right answer. So if it's red, green, blue, and the correct answer is red, then this would be zero. If the correct answer is green, this would be one. Correct answer is blue, this would be two. So this indicates which what the correct answer is. And this is a so what's something we'll get into later, but quiz is what we're gonna call our driver class. So we need to keep track of our driver class in this class so that that way when we give information to the driver class, when we tell the driver class whether the user got it right or not, we know we have the driver class address. We can refer back up to it. So that's why we are passing the driver classes in as one of the uh, parameters. So right away in the beginning, we say this dot quiz is equal to quiz and correct answer is equal to answer. And you can see we have correct answer right there, and and we have quiz right here. So that's that's where those two variables are initialized. And then we set the layout. Remember, this is a JPanel, so we're setting the layout of this class, the JPanel, to a new box layout. Box layout, the way that works is it has two parameters. One is which, um, which object is it organizing, in this case, our, this JPanel. It's a similar situation as right here, where we, we pass in ourself as a parameter so that it can refer back to us for more information. And then this is a constant, it's a number but the number is stored as a variable inside box layout so we have an easier time not not having to mem remember what the number all the numbers indicate so we want it to be organized all along the y axis so every time we have add a new one it'll be added vertically okay and then we've got to add everything so we have our question our answer and our bottom section so here we're going to add a new j label that's why i didn't initialize up there i decided to create it here since we don't want to mess with it later on so we're just going to create it and not give it a name it's a matter of preference. You could have initialized it up there as well. So we're going to go ahead and add it to our question panel, and then we're going to add the question panel to this panel. Answer. So we have our array, but it doesn't have anything in it. So we're going to first initialize it to however many options we have. So options being this, the, the, all the all of the um, possible responses, multiple choice. So we want the number of radio but buttons to match the number of these options, which is why we set the length of it of the array to the, not to the length of options and then we're going to iterate through each of those you can see how that works so you know i i less than the whatever the length is i plus plus so that will iterate through every index in the length so and every time we go through it first we're going to create a new object of the j radio button and one of the constructors for j radio button takes a string so so we're putting in the corresponding name in this string is what we're doing right here so if we put down a uh, 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 giraffe, then um, then the string corresponding to this button, when that's going to be put, put right next to the button, is going to be this giraffe. But we have a variable for that. Okay. Then we're going to add an action listener because uh, later on we're going to uh, use that. I could probably, I should probably just put that aside. Don't worry about that. You, I'm sure you understand how that works, but don't worry about that. Okay. Then we're going to say group that group dot add. Remember we created the button group up here up here and we're going to go ahead and add this response to that button group so this way or we can add this to the number of a radio button that the button group is in, in control of and then we're going to add our button to the answer panel the button group isn't isn't actually a physical thing that we add to the panel it's just a um, sort of abstract thing that organizes everything okay so this will go and add all the buttons to the panel or to the answer panel and then once we're finished with that we'll go and add the answer panel and then down here we're going to um, you know, set at the bottom, which, well, more action listeners here. Let me just get rid of that so it doesn't confuse anyone, or it shouldn't, but, yeah. And, uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and add the two buttons to the, to the bottom panel, and then we're going to go ahead and add the bottom panel. So that's all for this class, really, but we want to test it out. So you can you can write a quick main method, you know, 
here's all the stuff you would say in the main method, you know, the standard stuff, size, close operation, resizable. And then um, we're going to set the parameters for this so we can pass it in. Um, so I created this array as all the answers. So we have two wrong answers and a right answer. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new object of this class. So this is, I, mean, I think the way you would say this from a static perspective, this is not seeing the class as an object. And then all this is non-static perspective, so that is seeing the class as an object. So because of that, because it's from a static perspective, we can create a new object of this class inside here. And so the question is, uh, what's right? The options are the op this array, so wrong one, right, wrong two. And then we have one right here. And uh, I actually created this main method before we had this section to it, so it won't currently it won't run. But I guess you could remove this this variable, and then you can test it out. Well, I guess I could do that too. So get rid of that. Get rid of that. And then if I compile this, it should work. Radio question Java. Java radio question. Okay. Main method not found. Okay, I need to save this. That's what I need to do. I was wondering why I didn't get in here. Okay. Okay, that's more like it. Hmm. Main method not found in class radio question. Please define the main method. Okay, well, that's, that was the first time in here. Looks like I screwed something up in here. Aha, here we go. That was my bad. Uh, that was probably when I got rid of that to, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, that's when I got got rid of that to uh, prove a point earlier. Okay, so that that's probably where all these errors are coming from. <laughs> Five errors, not bad. Um, that's because I was screwing up this. Screwing up this thing. This should make a difference to you. I, I had these these variables hidden so that um, you wouldn't need to worry about them, but that gives me errors. Okay, there we go. Never be stressed by errors. Okay, so you can see that this triggered the main method over here, and it it uh so we had our J, J frame and we added a new object. This is the panel, so we added this panel to the class, and then it turned out like this. So you can see that's how it turned out. With what's right being the question, all the answers corresponding to the answers in this array, and then we have our next and finish button. All right. And by the way, if you're you're probably not used to seeing it from this perspective, like where um, I'm creating an object of JFrame. Usually, I have the class extend JFrame, but in this case, I'm actually creating it right here. And then I'm saying instead of saying set size, set default close operation, I'm saying frame dot frame dot frame dot because I'm referring to I'm making change to this to this object right here. I didn't say super because I took care of it in this constructor. So it's it's a good thing for you to see. It doesn't make really make a difference one way or another, but this is just a good way for you to see. Okay. So that's how our radio question object works. Um, next tutorial we're going to be well this is basically the interface of it. Next tutorial we're looking more to logic, so we're gonna add action listeners to all of these things, make it interact with the quiz, and quiz is gonna make a bunch of radio question we're just gonna set up a bunch of them. It's gonna be calling this constructor several times and it'll set up a whole test for us. So um, link in the description to the next part I might put an annotation if I remember to do so. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys next. See you guys next time.